Ahojte, moji milí druháci, vítam vás na ďalšej hodine. Chcel by som vás najprv pochváliť za absolvovanie testu, ktorý ste písali online. Bol to váš prvý test so mnou, sú, ako ste si všimli, sú dosť náročné a aj ten čas bol takýto. Vôbec sa netrápte o známky, pretože takéto by boli asi z prvej vašej písomky aj v škole. Samozrejme, niekedy neodhadnem ani ja, preste ten, ten čas, preto sa rozhodol, že vám teda znížim a tú stupnicu, respektíve posuniem tie veci trošku nahor, a percenta, takže v podstate známky máte asi o stupeň lepšie všetci komplet paušálne. A ja by som vám na začiatok chcel pripomenúť úplne prvú prezentáciu z prvej hodiny, ktorú sme mali a to, že podľa čo som vás hodnotil, čiže máte teda testy, Poznámky a povinné zadania teraz nemáte, ale pokiaľ by ste mi neodpovedali alebo nechodili na hodiny, tak samozrejme sa to berie do úvahy. Ústne skúšanie teraz nemáme, takisto aj tie otázky, takže to sú rovnako kontrolné otázky, nielen kvôli absencii, ale by som videl, akým spôsobom počúvate a tak ďalej. Ako si vylepšiť uh, známku z testu? Uh, pre všetkých sú to referáty, ktoré vám podľa pokynov teda dám a dostanete za to určitý počet bonusových jednotiek. Sú také, že trošku väčšie, čiže podobné ako keď spravíte nejaké ďalšie aktivity. Čiže podobne ako napríklad súťaže, na, ktoré sme mali na rôzne dni, aktivity, mali ste Salmandrové dni, Diandria, Kmeťa, čiže niektorí ste mohli písať články a priebežne posielate, čo som rád. Takisto, ak sa niečo ho zúčastňujete, nejakých aktivít dobrovoľníckých a tak ďalej. No a ďalšie možnosti, ktoré tam sú, myslím, že toto bolo všetko jasné, aj poznámky. A ako písať anotácie a referáty, tak v podstate toto si treba znovu otvoriť. Prezentáciu tuto máte na Logical, takže tam si ju nájdete, máte tam rozsah. Môžete napísať ten rozsah aj viacej, nie limitovaný, že maximálne. Musíte však dodržiať samozrejme tú formu a musíte mať použité zdroje a literatúru. Pozor na tieto tri body, ktoré, podľa ktorých idete, pretože a, sa vám ten ducho môže hodiť. Ja vám budem vyberať pokiaľ chcete z diepisu, hlavne z rôznych uh, historických stránok, avšak ak uh, nie ste veľmi diepisne zameraní, chceli by ste niečo iné, tak uh, môže byť a to sa individuálne mi napíšte, dohodneme sa, napíšte, čo máte radi a môžete pracovať. Každopádne však tým, že vy ste mali, uh, vy ste mali viacej veci, tak uh, čakám skôr také bonusové úlohy, ktoré ste mali. Nezabudnite všade a vš- aj tak citovať a parafrázovať a rovnako na konci, aj keď bude to oral history, musí byť napísaný zdroj, čiže treba napísať priezvisko, meno, presne tak, ako je to tu naznačené a toto keď nemáte, tak vám to vracem na prerobenie náspäť. Uh, pokiaľ mám nervy na to, ak už nebudem mať nervy, tak jednoducho vám to neuznám a vám to nepomôže. Takže treba si na to dať pozor, tu máte knihy, takto sa citujú články z internetu, čiže ak máte tam meno, treba ho napísať. Ak nemáte meno, tak môžete napísať napríklad, že YouTube channel, ja neviem, diepis inak s veľkými písmenami, názov toho videa, zverejnené, kedy ste ho dali, alebo kedy ste ho vypoužili a dostupné na dáte link. Čiže toto sú veci, ktoré treba stále pokračovať. Ak vám to povedal rodič, učiteľia. Niekde ste sa to dozvedeli takto, rovnako musíte napísať približne, ako tu máte rozhovor, kedy, kde, s kým, ktorého dňa, po prípade ako zaznamenaný, kde ho nájdete, dobre? Takže formou listu a tak ďalej, alebo rozhovoru. No, ďalšie súťaže, ktoré máte, tak priebežne vám ich samozrejme posielame, takže nezabudnite, čo by ste sa mohli zapojiť napríklad do Eustory, diepisná súťaž gymnázii, ktorú máme aj tak online, diepisná olimpia, do nej sa malo to zapája, takže máte veľkú jednotku, archeologická súťaž gymnázia, tento rok má vlastnú tému. No, aktivity bonusové, ktoré vy hlavne budete robiť, tak samozrejme dostali ste ich niekoľko pri tom úvode, a, kde sú, ktoré sú veľmi fajn, si myslím, a, ktoré sa dajú spracovať vašej rodine aj teraz, keď ste doma, takže treba sa na ne samozrejme pripraviť. Z prievody ste samozrejme nestihli všetky rady písať, však môžete pre školský časopis. Ozvite sa im, napíšte mi nejaké veci. Práca na dne Andreja Kmeťa a dne ľudských práv, bohužiaľ, sa nám onedlho pár dní v podstate asi nebude konať prezenčne, ale môžete vymyslieť nejakú aktivitu, článok, možno niečo, čo by ste poslali, nahrali deckám, pripravili možno nejakú zaujímavú vec. Samozrejme, ak pracujú ďalšie veci, tak treba sa zúčastniť. Tieto veci bohužiaľ pre nás nie sú momentálne aktívne, ale aj teraz pred Vianočný čas veľa vecí, ktoré môžete riešiť, zorganizovať sa, sa dá zapojiť. Takže toto sme mali rôzne veci, ktoré samozrejme 
sme riešili. Takže pozor, známky srdce máte jedny, ale toto vám výrazne môže upraviť veľké malobonusové úlohy. No a podľa toho ja som vám aj známky upravil. Takže krátke 5-minútové intro, ktoré sme mali, poďme teda prejsť ďalej. Vy ste teda minulú hodinu pozerali túto látku Online Lesson, The Emergence of Life and Anthropogenesis. Viete, že to bola téma z minulého školského roku. No a ja som tedy niečo doplnil, čiže veľmi stručne prebehnem nejaké veci, prezentácie, ktoré som možno nespomenul, alebo ktoré si môžete sami pozrieť. A pôjdeme ďalej na Stone Age, Period a ľudí v práveku, ako budeme. Uvidíme, pokiaľ teda zajdeme s touto témou. OK, so this uh, topic, as I told you uh, at the previous lesson, is combination of uh, English and Slovak notes uh, for the reason that uh, at the end of prehistorical topic we will deal mostly with Slovakia, especially Bronze Age. So also to give you a lot of terminology in Slovak, that was the reason why there is also Pravek. We are not going to watch the, the video for which there is also, sorry for that, Uh, there was also other things. What I added was some more explanation about this biogenesis and evolutional theory. So let's have a look at a couple of videos uh, in which I believe that my internet connection will work uh, for this reason. So this video that is like approximately 14 minutes, the previous uh, time during the lockdown, students were supposed to watch it and give make either quiz for that or various other stuff. So this is another like YouTube teaching channel. Uh, I believe it's from India according to name and it was really interesting in graphic way and they try to explain this abiogenesis also from biological and chemical way. <clears throat> of course, this is kind of for history, but uh, this is something that you are learning, studying at chemistry in Mr. Haas. And if you didn't understand how it works, so just Google this, how the life begins, a biogenesis from this website of Arvin Ash. Okay, let's have a look at the other one. Uh, at the other one, which is panspermia theory. Uh, panspermia theory is how this picture depicted uh, how it is spread due to through asteroids or um, comets, for example. Of course, there can be di directed panspermia, but uh, one thing I didn't tell you maybe the previous uh, previous lesson uh, is that this is actually much more uh, much more probable. Do you know why? Because we need to prove it with experiment. That was this third, fourth part stage of the scientific method. But the point is. But the point is that even we humans have already started with panspermia from the Earth to other space objects. And because we are sending, of course, these uh, missiles and space shuttles uh, to universe, and they are meeting, of course, with this uh, material flying around even to the moon, uh, our uh, sons or like our rockets or um, Uh, these discoveries, for example, are flying around Jupiter and so on. So if they meet with something, they contain at least something from from uh, from the Earth. So this panspermia is actually a common thing happening all around. It only depends whether life can be uh, present at some of these pieces of rocks uh, flying across the uh, across the space. Coming back, maybe what you in were interested was about. Uh, <laughs> Uh, aliens, maybe some supernatural, <clears throat> so directed spermi, panspermia. The point is that actually, again, we are doing it the same because we are also uh, some creatures living in the universe, spreading actual life around. And already in moon, we got its flag and so on. You know, there there are plans to build the colonies on Mars. Uh, still, we haven't landed there. Uh, nevertheless. The point is, the point is that actually we humans are also spreading like life around it. Uh, I told you that there is actually probability of existence of life in the universe 100%, but a possibility of meeting with other <clears throat> high, highly civilized, highly advanced civilization is almost zero uh, due to the thing that the distances, as far as we know the physics, Uh, are so huge uh, to the nearest exoplanets that are possible for life that it would take us millions of years uh, to travel there. Which means that it's pretty long time enough for any species and on the Earth, at, on, the, on the planet Earth, not to survive that. And 
that's probable that uh, probably it's very difficult to meet his life so one of the things is that his aborigine is probably the high highest probably probable of course evolutional theory of charles darwin is uh, origin of the species in here what i told you that actually he himself was a believer so he said he believes in god creation but then he it was different and in the bible it said so this is one of the videos of a crash course history but not for uh not for history but for history of science which is you know that in for example usa uh subject science this is john green's brother and i i need to put it like in a lower part and this is the this is science subject is you know like physics chemistry laboratories from slovakia and it's combination of this and he's uh explaining about evolutional theory so it's pretty like easy um to look for more uh information over the internet in here okay so let's move on Okay, for the monkey trial case of this uh, trial, I added also two cartoons in which da Charles Darwin comparing himself to a monkey in the mirror to mock him and his Darwinist evolutional theory. On the other hand, of course, uh, what is the other, like creationism is uh, the thing that is believed, religious belief, which cannot be proved because it's not true. And we have actually plenty of evidence, it's not like this. And you may know, you may remember, there were like some crazy, very short period movement of this flat earthers just like today with vaccination some people just believe that scientists are like well, giving fake false information so in this way this was another cartoon so so much for the day today's biology lesson about this like god's creation on intelligent design how the how the creation is called it turning now the subject of intelligent geography with flat earth so this is also cartoons are uh, interesting nice thing how to show the how people were perceiving all the things happening in the history just like with this mocking like uh, Michelangelo Bunarotti the Sistine Chapel God's creation with flying spaghetti monster and what I mentioned before that is also ID card of one of the guys Pastafarians <laughs> with a sight on his head as a religious cover of his head which is mocking stuff because they believe that they are creationists themselves uh, but as Charles Darwin claimed that he was for this that maybe the God's divine the, this intelligent design was at the beginning the first part because even with embryogenesis, when you come to that point, and many people claim that we can't explain it, and they want to crash with their uh, inner fate, they said, maybe that was the touch of the sparkle. Of course, it depends on your fate, on your but it's not science, please. So this is the thing that the evolution is a fact, and how it moved on was explained in here. Okay, when we pass through these stages, I was looking for some better, visually better um, better chart, uh, which is geological st scale of time from the Cambrian, or like Protozeroic proto to Cambrian, Ordovic, Silurian, which is early oceans, and how you see from the fish, from fishes, and first amphibians appear crawling to the land, and just like in this the Simpsons video, you know, turning to reptiles and birds, and of course insects all around, and coming even to mammals in here. So I passed through this, so a couple of nice pictures that I'm going to explain in a while, how artists from 1940s and 1950s were uh, from Czechoslovakia, I think. So, period of Cambrian and of Proterozoic with some small ponds and high volcanic uh, activity combination of these creating the atmosphere that protects the, the thing. So, now this is this Cambrian on Silur seas and oceans of Pangaea uh, with trilobites and medusas all around, and of course, how this from Pangea to Gondwana part. So we also path for this. Another thing is that of course it was changing these plates uh uh, we're moving so fast that uh, not to understand Panji as a single one, Eurasia in the north and Gondwana was Africa, Latin America and India together how it is. And of course in the future they will be moving on, that's why we got still volcanic activities in here. So a couple of pictures, this is not from this Czechoslovak one, uh, but how these some of the fishes were claw crawling to the bank you know to find more like species from uh, especially insects for example and this is how reptiles actually appeared some of these ancient fish was were called even discovered like in the seas like maybe 20 30 years ago okay mesozoic period with uh, this uh, not only jurassic park uh, the famous movie but also before that triassic and later cretaceous uh in slovak these are words for uh mesozoic znamená druhohory trias 
Jura Akrieda. So this was for the Slovak lesson. So if you haven't got it, you, you have got it here. Okay, the same chart as we had before, and now Cenozoic, which were where reptiles were replaced by the domain predators on the earth birds that were, that were so big, and they were, uh, of course, meat eaters, uh, uh, carnivorous birds that were actually big enough. Look at this, like, like some antelope in here, like three meters tall. Like not an ostrich, but a, like eagle ostrich, whatever. So they were like dominant predators. Later on, even giant mammals appeared, but it lasts for uh, until the period when humans appear, because they would be like super predators for the planet Earth. And these guys may be like Cenozoic horses or giraffes, uh, maybe rhinos in the future will turn into like mastodons, for example, like far related to elephants before of this period and we're coming to the early humans australopithecus all these paintings as you see it were made by Zdenek Burian very famous uh painter from this period and for that time that time it was really inspirational and they got the most modern um knowledge of those times to have these paintings that was one of the inspirations also for the movie Cesta do Pravico as I told you okay history of the earth is another uh, is another video that I wanted to show you. Okay, and also uh, your colleagues from a high grade had to analyze it in their assignment during the second uh, quarantine lockdown period. And okay, we have already some advertisement which I didn't like. Didn't watch. So sorry for that. Okay, so you can watch it later. I can watch it later if you wish. Uh, we don't have time for this. So when we started with the human prehistory, we went through, I described you, uh, main species. Don't forget to mention and be sure about their <coughs> sorry names. And uh, this is so from Homo habilis to Homo erectus uh, to Homo sapiens neanderthalensis or later on Homo sapiens sapiens that are called Cro-Magnon people. Uh, the thing is that it was not so easy, like all of these, like from Australopithecus, since Australopithecus still uh, Cro-Magnon people, uh, to Cro-Magnon people in here, uh, it's not so easy. And even like a big surprise that all these people were like troglodytes, savage people who are stupid. It's probably not true because Neanderthalans is, thanks to discovery also, a brain uh, from a Neanderthal human was actually bigger in uh, like 1450 uh, so cubic centimeters to Cro-Magnon people 1400 uh, cubic centimeters, which is which proves that probably Neanderthal people had bigger brain. Doesn't mean that they were more clever because it depends on the number of these uh, curves, you know, and the brain uh, on the brain that makes you more clever. And this is different. But this chart is very important because when you go from like two million years ago. To, from Australopithecus to uh, Homo habilis, all these Homo ergaster in this case, skull. Then you move to Homo erectus, but look at this, living only in Asia and surviving for approximately like uh, uh, 100,000 years ago, which is really not so not so far away. Like in Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, Australia, there were these people still living. Uh, but we have another branch of humans that were not ancestors. So Homo erectus is actually not our ancestor. So we had another Homo antecessor, Homo eretitanicus, and many, many others. Discovery, especially in Africa, in Kenya, South Africa, Zimbabwe, uh, being discovered. And as you see, traveling to Europe, but going extinct, as according to the ice ages, were going on and passing by and how they're adjusting to the climate especially. So for that reason, even we have these European Homo sapiens neanderthalensis, but look at this, living approximately like 50, 40 years ago, but Homo sapiens coming from Africa again, spreading also to Asia, being extinct for a while. In Africa, two species, Homo sapiens, and again, very small part when Neanderthal people were in Europe approximately 200,000 years. So Homo sapiens sapiens, Cromanian people, came in the late period, spread all around the world, thanks to a couple of things that were actually invented or maybe discovered uh, and compared to Homo erectus, which made them dominant and even uh, suppressing the like these Homo neanderthalensis in Europe, as you see, living at the same time. So imagine that, let's say, 250 years ago, there was one, two, three, four, five different species of human, which I'm not talking about races, 
of Homo sapiens, but about various human species, which were different. And this is really in in interesting and incredible, since you imagine that we live like 2,000 years and only 200,000 years, there are actually different people, types of people in here. Okay, I'm sorry for that, my dog was just barking. Chilina, what was Okay, she scared me. Maybe she was scared of this mammoth in the picture. You don't have to be scared. Chilina, what's it? What's my... Okay, at least I show you the dog. I have in here my prehistoric fox. Oh, what are you? She's stretching right now. Okay, what you can see is here this obsidian or a stone tool that was used by them. Was used by them. Okay, come on, Chilina. Come on, Chilina. Okay, so... That's the dog, maybe she was dreaming about something. <laughs> okay, that's her prehistoric dog. Okay, and so what is important? Uh, what is important? Uh, there are many myths around how people are living in Paleolithic, but I'm going to show you a couple of things. Even Neanderthal people were hunting for hairy rhinos, even here in Slovakia. Uh, Homo sapiens, sapiens people, were not living only in caves, which means the Trogolodite people, but it was uh, they were actually nomadic people who were traveling from one place to another for a hunt. And of course, they were living mostly like in Indonesia or, for example, in Native Americans in in America. What we know from these Western movies, like building teepees, wigwams, and traveling, living in this tribal society of nomads. So it was really different. Okay, uh, I'm not going to show you also this journey click of many. I shall try, maybe we will. We will. Uh, but I think it was under restoration, under reconstruction, this this uh, website. Okay, so yeah, that's now, now it's uh, the project of the movie. So uh, let's leave it uh, alone. But the thing is that projection was people live just like in the countryside. So they could, for example, follow in Europe, the her and Asia, the herds of mammoths. Yeah, if you remember this, you got a great childhood. <laughs> and also, I think like converting to 20th century uh, diet, I heard they can live up to 100 because these people were dying at my age, usually because they had lost all the teeth. Like this doggy dog, she's like all 13 years old. She misses some of the some of the teeth, you know. Yeah. Okay, so um, okay, so how this Homo sapiens was spreading around the earth? I'm talking about this period of 200 years. This should be, I believe, it works because this can be really useful for us from uh, Facebook Insider, uh, Business Insider, that is almost famous magazine and online the website, and I believe it will be it will be working in here with animated map, with beautiful music, with beautiful music, so I believe it's going to be in here. Okay, so I'm going to read it for you. Firm Homo sapiens are born 200 years, uh, 30 years ago. It's also kind of revolution. You see, look at Sahara, that was, that is going to change soon to be more greener, and also how this things are going to change also with white things cover with ice and while with climate changes are changing so we have like first uh, migration to Asia which is 60 years ago these people were actually black skin black race and this look at this even lower sea coast that Papua New Guinea with Australia together was kind of a bridge you can get through and these were aboriginal people, for example, and their descendants living today. Then these may be uh, other people changing to other parts, what will be like maybe Asian race or Micronesia, uh, and but also like people in India, like Dravidian languages and so on. So Homo sapiens in here. Then we have uh, people traveling to the north, which can be like Neanderthal people and uh, settling in Europe. So this is like 40 years ago, and these Homo sapiens, sapiens already, because Neanderthal people were had been already there. So sorry for that. And uh, also one thing that we have the last ice age. Look at the how, the ice cap, how it is coming further. And this is the way that not only the Bering Straits between Asia and America are covered, but because the sea is much lower, you can cross the sea with barefoot, not only with ice, and come to America. Of course, there was also Ter Herdal expedition, famous two movies, uh, so one is a brand new one, that tried to prove that uh, people could came, come to America, South America, from Asia, from Australia, crossing the Pacific Ocean, because they had already had some ships that were in here. 
and now we are coming to analytic period so what do you need to know what you need to remember lads and girls lads and girls is uh, this other this other part okay in this way also if you remember genography uh, we had also the, the the dissolution of haplogroups and how this genetic um, heritage yeah genetic line can be uh, uh, track today thanks to mitochondrial DNA migrations map and there is a situation today and of course some of them are really like um, cr not crazy like various but and ambivalent and really various but some lands can be really easily tracked with uh, the original haplogroups groups from Africa Asia or Europe so this is really really different thing what do you need to know for the history for the test and like general knowledge for you as gymnasisti Okay, I'm catching the flying fur from the dog. She's changing her <laughs> fur. Uh, this late Paleolithic, Cheneskora do Bakamena. As always, you can, uh, I promise to teach you some Greek. So, Palos, it is old, it is like late. And uh, lit, lit uh, it means stone in Greek. So, late Paleolithic, like this late, last, this part, last part of the Stone Age, when we have uh, Cromagnon people uh, in Europe already and also at our territories. Uh, these people were different from previous Neanderthal who already had had some uh, attempts or there are some clues that these people had like a high level of thinking with thinking about uh, the death and uh, about maybe some supernatural stuff. But in this way there is definitely a beautiful proof which is art, especially preserved in cave paintings. It doesn't mean when they were in cave paintings that they were living only in, ca in caves but it was because uh, they were preserved well in the caves, and uh, especially two of them, most famous, Altamira in Fran uh, in uh, Spain with Basque lands actually, and Lasco, both in Pyrenees, uh, were actually landlocked for for thousands of years, and that's why the the paintings were were preserved in such beautiful uh, state in here. And as you see, depictions of a hunt. And as I said, this an extension land that Dalysis came here in too. The there were actually many uh, many uh, ideas uh, why like whether these Neanderthal people were killed, uh, annihilated by Cromagnon people. Uh, but today, actually, this genographic uh, genographic uh, researches prove that Europeans, some Europeans, had up to three percent of Neanderthal genes. What does it mean that they were mating? Uh, so they were actually babies from Neanderthal and Cromagnon couple. Both. So this like bastards, mixtures, you know, in here. And that means that some people have different, maybe, I don't know, as I have bigger eyebrows, for example, you can stand winter better than the others. And you know that sometimes it there is there is this myth, I'm not sure whether it is true or not, that according to your blood type, you also can digest, for example, milk, dairy products or meat, or you really need to have meat or not. And of course, some people were like this Neolithic farmers and a couple of other things that showing that some people are really like genius minds of the depiction uh, from the Altamira as uh, the some of the buffaloes in here where some of the buffaloes in here were in uh, form of like baby just before the bird so little you know, little calf uh, being be, being born just been before being born and uh, other are uh, venus venus is with uh, not capital but small v uh, where the statues small little statues made of bones of mammoths or uh, deers for example they were wood card and this was actually art that these people had every day not only in the case to go away okay uh so in this way, uh, this uh, Venusis was another piece of art that kind of demonstrated uh, demonstrated uh, their vision of life, an idea maybe of a goddess, maybe as a tribute to all the women who could uh, give birth uh, to a baby, to a new human, and they could milk him, feed him or her, and uh, save his life. You know, so men can't do that. But women, they did. So for that reason, these Venuses usually were naked uh, ladies with, um, of course, hyper-symbolized uh, 
uh, symbolize breast and hips and that was symbols of king giving giving birth look like thin uh, chick who just like didn't survive the birth during the ice age period so that was the myth of the beauty that was the idol of beauty of prehistoric period not important like what is in the face maybe it was like mother earth that they believed to be uh, given back even then that help you people started to actually bury they dead to the ground not to be eaten and probably symbolically uh laid to the ground uh, like covered with some uh nice colored powder from flowers that were smelling nice and also people were uh placed in a position of the embryo of uterus uh, position in here like these calves so you see there was actually beautiful combination between life nature with the animals and and humans and if you're going to compare like this Paleolithic and Paleolithic uh, beautiful paintings with shading. So when you compare these early humans that were like in here, I can tell you this Bronze Age in Scandinavia. So the difference is approximately 40,000 years later. In this period, we were building uh, ramparts, hill forts, Hradiska here in Slovakia. From the, the movies, uh, there is another movie. Let's see. Let's check out the connection in here. Actually, at the moment, there are half of Banska Štjanicas without electricity, so I'm happy that I can record it for you. But that would be trailer for the movie, so not to have commercials and advertisement is with Antonio Banderas, the movie Altamira. And it's more like um, to be interesting for the guys who are uh, finding Altamira, uh, for the people who are uh, interested in this stuff. Okay, so let's move on. Another Smithsonian history. The oldest cave paintings in the world were actually found only uh, like one or two years ago. Uh, actually, uh, this was well known only in the media, but January 2016, so from here, 20 years, 25 years ago, uh, were found in uh, Indonesia. And they are much, much older than Altamira or Lasco, which are, of course, European. But you know that these regions, even islands, were uh, had had been settled even before that and so these are like interesting parts okay so you can read it uh, you can read it too uh let's move on uh let's move on further because we are still after the stone age period that is called paleolithic which can be translated as old stone age we come to the middle uh, stone age or high stone age and we uh, call it according to greek translation which means mesolithic meso means in between this was pretty short period of only like approximately ten thousand years uh which was a period of the last glacial period so that was this ice cape was spreading around and also sucking all the water from the lakes and rivers and oceans which the sea level decreased for example you can walk from netherlands to to england or from indonesia to australia and that was a period when during which this megafauna extinct if you remember not only mammals but also other big horses at the time many of them had been extinct already but they were actually for example sorry for that uh they're actually like giant uh not giant but really big deers uh cave bears uh saber tooth uh tigers and lions and many others uh, imagine that my room in here or our class that they were just the antlers of a, a huge deer that was like three 3.5 meters tall that was incredible actually and mammoths uh, were extinct during this period but interesting fact is that they survived in for another more than 8000 years in one specific place on the earth and that was the island called Wrangler Wrangler Island in Russia in Siberia uh, which was for many years and especially in this Mesolithic period uh, part of this place so here in siberia mammoth herds were traveling to the north to keep the climate because climate was changing after the holocene maybe running away from hunters we'll come to that point soon and they came to wrangler island before wolves and humans came there and by between that period and after that the glaciers the icebergs melt and they melted and they created 
an obstacle for humans to get to Wrangel Island. For, for another 8,000 years, mammoths remained safe in this special iron reservation. So it's actually a true thing that you know from crazy movie 10,000 BC, which is actually a stupid movie, but it's true that at the time when pyramids were built, there were still mammoths living uh, on the earth. Don't forget if I gave you some questions, if I give me give you some questions to uh, comment, to write the comments in uh, the Facebook or if you watch it later, maybe in Microsoft Teams. It depends on the assignment I have given to you before. What is the point? Uh, approximately last 2000 years of this Mesolithic period comes what Diego and Mandy experienced in this famous cartoon and that was warmer climate and uh, global warming. Uh, this is called the period of Holocene or the Holocene and this was last period of Mesolithic period. What else? Now this megafauna was used to different conditions. The other thing that humans are spreading thanks to warmer climate, it's excellent place for them because they're looking for warm places not to get frozen during the winter not to die and at the same time they are introducing two ultimate weapons of humankind history i'm not talking about a bombs or machine guns or airplanes i'm talking about the dog and i'm talking about bow and arrow these two things allowed humans to kill animals fast running animals from a distance with bow and arrow that had this tool was used before that to uh, uh, to make a fire with, you know, this uh, crashing and uh, rubbing, rubbing each other. So that was creating the sparkles later on. But the dog is another thing that if you tame pack of wolves that obey you, uh, that obey you, and they are on on your sitting on your lap. But before that, these animals were catching from from deers, uh, bringing the ducks from the lake, even to uh, killing rats and mice, you know, in your neighbors eating your supplies. So this is something that probably also is bringing the, the death of mammoths and many, many other animals. What follows? What follows? Because before I move on, I have to check the time. Beautiful. Plenty of time. Okay. I have to move on. Sorry for that. Uh, we are coming to the period that is completely different and it's called Neolithic. Neo, you know from Latin, the same in Greek, it means new. Čiže nová doba, alebo mladšia doba, alebo aj neskôr doba kamena, uh, was a period uh, when this Holocene and bow arrow and dog, extinction megafauna, caused one thing, that people like me, meat eaters, carnivorous people, suddenly had nothing to eat. If you remember that, before that you had been nomading, traveling from one place to another, following the tracks and uh, footsteps of the herds of animals to hunt them. And if you were successful, one mammoth could feed you for all the winter, all the tribe. And suddenly there were no mammoths, there were no animals, no deers, no antelopes, no nothing like this. And suddenly, how can you survive? So one... Suddenly, these climate changes brought something we called it Neolithic Neolithic Revolution because people from gathering and hunt, they had to move to the food production. So what does it mean? Uh, it means that you need to settle down. For example, when you got no meat to eat, you got no meat to eat, uh, you had to gather something. And if you gather something, it means you just pick it up from here. Imagine you find uh, an apple tree or strawberries, wild strawberries in the forest. You eat them all. Perfect. The next day you're dying again. So what can you do? If you're intelligent, you probably survive thanks to this. You pick up the apples, pick up the strawberries, you eat some of them. But then you know that there are seeds. If they fall, if you leave them in the ground, if you water it, if you take care of it, protect it from, I don't know, insects, for example. So in a, in a settlement you have where you can build protection, like with some fence, for example, it can grow next time. And within like 10, 20 years, you got all orchard of apple trees, you got strawberries there. And the same thing, of course, you need some more uh, better nutrition uh, foods and uh, plants. And for that reason, they started with cultivation of barley, yachmen, wheat, pšenica, maize, kukurica in American English, or corn, in, of course, in uh, British English, and rice in Far East, in Asia. So this is the thing that suddenly they start experimenting and doing what we call genetically modified 
fully. And this is the thing that for them, this general, this is a genetic modification is that you try picking up the seeds which are able to survive these conditions that are resilient to some diseases, they are not so tasty for the insects, but for you, and so on. Rice bigger in big enough, so it's, it's worth it to plant it and grow it, and uh, you can feed your uh, families then. So this was really a big, tremendous, dramatic change in here. Other thing is, if you are lucky enough to meet some some animal that before that you probably would kill, like some horse, sheep, or a goat, like Capricorn, or a horse, wild horse that is like as big, like low, lower than me, like this one. So you're not going to kill it. You try to catch it capture it keep it in um in some around behind the fence take care of it try to tame it and you know if they are okay if they'll feel, if they feel safe they can have babies and calves and cubs you know and uh lambs and you got something to eat for the next year it's just like all the meat and gradually they learn they realize that they provide also milk and if you feed them properly they can provide enough milk you can milk them make cheese make milk from this and you get another extra excellent uh, thing to eat so this neolithic revolution was not only agriculture about farming but also about growing and domestication of animals and settling this is important thing because to settle down means you need a good farmland around in here you need some protection you need to organize with people and this is very important where this neolithic revolution appeared between 10,000 6,000 ad was so called the civilization of the fertile crescent remember the flags of these arabic or muslim lands yes that was similar so here in mesopotamia and in anatolia nowadays in turkey they were first um civilization appearing which were actually based on agriculture building early ur urban settlements like Yericho, Chatalhik, also first temples like in Malta and Stonehenge and Skarabrev with the first toilet ever and all these things are called megalithic sites because these people with uh, they need to organize it was not only small tribes small a few families together but there were actually a lot of people together living in a big settlements let's say 10 5,000 people, like the some of the biggest are in Slovakia, near Žitava or in Eastern Slovakia in Zemplin. And you can actually, with a lot of people, you can actually lift also a big stone and big temple in here. Later period, in analytic period, the first copper smelting appears, which is Pracovanie Medi. Big thing, you know. Wheel was invented. Uh, plow, pluch, uh, there were some proto-writing scripts and uh, letters appearing and also religion appeared in here. There was actually an argument, uh, discussion whether the religion was before agriculture, agriculture after revolution, uh, religion. You know that people had some religious ideas even before in Paleolithic period already about organized religion. Something different, we'll come to that point. Pottery was done at the first time, Hrnčiarstvo, and trade, of course, and we have uh, evidence, evidences about uh, great international trade all around. So, a couple of pictures in here, the Fertile Crescent uh, territories, and why it is called the Fertile Crescent. You see these the rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates, and the Nile River. Uh, each of them, both of them, when we talk about ancient civilization, we're bringing annual floods, and that's why it was very easy for people to plant uh, a seed which will grow only in one month. Here in Slovakia, it will grow in three months, for example. Uh, and uh, as maybe surprise for some people here in uh, Anatolia, there were first samples of these uh, dumbest cultivated barley appearing. The same time, at the same time, we have a dog already since the Mesolithic period. But then we have like the most peaceful animals, like sheep, for example, goats, uh, cattle, and pigs. All of them in the Middle East, so in this fertile crescent, you probably Polmesiats. Cats, look at them. Cats are very important because if you have a harvest, you got a full barn of uh, of grains and suddenly mice appear, you know, they're like within one week there are thousands of them. So who saves you? A cat. Tom. Tom cat. Okay, later on from Central Asia there was a horse domesticated, not so great for maybe for food but excellent for riding which appears approximately 5000 years ago in analytic period and gradually also the camels for example one humped camels turkeys and even duck that is present in 
in uh, China. So actually, uh, poultry was not so common in here. And this is what I told you about the picking up the chromosomes. Of course, at the time, they didn't have laboratories. They didn't study biogenetics, uh, chemistry in Bratislava and Brno. So they were trying out and dying. You know? So it took like thousands of years when they could cultivate uh, the forms of uh, wheat, for example, or barley um, uh, in the form as we know it today. Thanks to laboratories, we can do the same thing within a few years. That's why when you read about GMO, corn, GMO, rice, actually be happy because this is actually second analytic revolution for which we can, with the same sources, same resources, we can save like people in dying of hunger in Africa and India and so on. Uh, okay, how these uh, people were changing, they were changing also their, their housing. And this is the thing when suddenly they were like uh, building this urban settlement, it means villages and towns. Uh, of course, they will be fortified for many people, not only a few families, but for a whole tribe. That's why <clears throat> a couple of families in these long houses of Neolithic period, many of them can be found in here. Near Zelizovce, there was one of the biggest villages, approximately 5,000 people around it. This is how it maybe looked like in this Neolithic period with already some houses built up, fences for the cattle, you know, dogs around and some barns to protect them from mice and, and so on. And hay that you can feed animals during the winter. So this is really dramatic step also in the way how people look like, how they behave and how it spread it all around because, you know, this Neolithic revolution appeared at the same time like also with the dog uh, domestication approximately the same time with various places of the earth in Americas, in Europe, Africa, and uh, in Middle East, and in East Asia. The same thing will happen with domestication of animals, with cultivation of plants, later on maybe building pyramids, and appearance of writing scripts. So this is interesting that not only maybe one guy of human species are evolving, but even societies. And you can get the same <coughs> idea when you come to proper age, to the proper level of civilization evolution. So for that reason, uh, maybe, I don't know, you all started to walk approximately at the same time. You learned to say first words. You uh, coming to the uh, to the puberty and adulthood at the same age, you know, so <clears throat> approximately, of course, because there are some exceptions. In later part, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice, so it's time to finish soon. Uh, after that time, uh, at the end of the Neolithic period, uh, we start with this uh, copper smelting. And uh, this is the thing that will come together also with Neolithic uh, expansion in Europe. And as you see, it's difficult because from Anatolia, 6000 BC, coming with question marks to the Balkans and Italy. But you know, these are like hilly terrain, not very good for agriculture because rainfalls are are not like kept together so people were looking for some better places in here and not only at the coast of Greece but look at this this is Slovakia eastern Slovakia southern Slovakia Hungary excellent with slowly floating rivers with not annual floods but like re really rare floods with uh, enough warm sun and climate that you can rely on the regular harvest in here. So that's why some of the best places for Neolithic archaeological excavations are here in East Central Europe around Slovakia. Not more to the to the north. This is one of the <clears throat> most interesting parts of archaeological discoveries in past years, which is a Turkish uh, site called Gebekli Tepe, which was uh, which was discovered uh, like some years ago and people <coughs> knew that there is probably something be beneath. Uh, I'm going to play a video again, depends whether the internet connection is fast today. And ancient aliens. This is actually not about ancient aliens, but how people would believe it is if there were aliens. Uh, can be actually the part when in 1994 this guy discovered that on this mound where he was uh, pasture, pasturing and plowing his field uh, were some like regular shaped stone. And this is interesting how they started with uh, brushing the dead archaeologists who discovered that there are much larger objects. And gradually, gradually they turn into like bigger stuff. There are more stones around it, like a circle around. And suddenly there were more circles around and obviously kind of a structure kind of a structure that looks like uh, 
that looks like a temple, and even there were uh, reliefs, reliefy, uh, of animals, and all the animals domesticated, various animals, wild and domesticating, and so on. So obviously, there was no, it was not a mound, Mohila, it was not a graveyard. Probably, there was a system of of maybe temples of some religious buildings for this. And one important thing that is very unique, yeah, temples, so what? But first temples are appearing in Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt approximately, approximately uh, like 3000 BC, maybe 4000 BC. And megalithic sites even much later, like 6000 BC. This is 10,000 before Christ. So this was really incredible how these people could make it because it was before this agricultural revolution came. And you know what is other funny thing? People who were building this stuff, so we can, we should probably uh, need to find, or archaeologists could probably find the things they were using, the tools, but they could find only like bone tools. You can find the food they were eating. No, no vegetarian uh, agricultural stuff. All of them were just bones of the animals they hunted. And these animals, because they were not common, you cannot feed, you cannot build like 20 people is going to build it. You need hundreds, maybe thousands of people who can, who can build it. And they were all, sorry for that, again, the lesson starts soon. Uh, that it starts in here and uh, maybe civilizations will grow up from the need of the hunters because there were no animals and we know that these people were traveling coming here from very far long distance even from turkey from caucasian mountains maybe from europe so imagine you hunt for all the year try to find something you are so desperate you cannot find anything and you know you heard from other people that you meet that somewhere in Middle East, in Christian, Fertile Christian, they are building some structure that probably, maybe, can summon animals back. So you hunt something, you take animals, you roast it, and got on a travel back here. You help building this, and again, the next season, after this, when you uh, run out of your uh, supplies, go back to your homeland to hunt for animals, come back and gradually build this temple. We have hypothesis, that's why ancient aliens probably not and that's why also another story that i added for you guys is from a slovak archaeologist uh dushan valen that is having this uh this website and uh i strongly recommend you to uh read it because he's actually comparing um or maybe, uh, yes, comparing the latest scientific research discoveries and everything what was said in YouTube and history channel and the media, but what is real historical stuff and how to extract it, give it for the students of history, for example, like you, that he also write, like, what is demagogy, what is reality about the oldest megalithic monuments in the world? So there is a long, long article in here about what are probably, what is the reason, again, you see Gebekli Tepe and Fertile Crescent and how people were turning from hunt and gathering to this stuff. Also, how the megalithic sites were being built not so late, like in Eastern Islands, in Papua New Guinea, not many years uh, ago, how it is on. And you see, literature sources, never forget about literature, how to mention it, okay? So, uh, for me, that's basic stuff like in here. And of course, if you got some internet sources, read it too. So Dusha Valen, maybe one day we can invite him for Neandre Akmetya and you can write about him. So uh, early uh, stuff. And so the, probably religion was uh, only like uh, try to save you from this, that you have nothing to eat. And actually becoming vegetarian, starting to be a farmer. It's, you know, very unstable work because there may be like bad weather too hot, too cold, uh, heavy rainfall, uh, uh, there may enemies can come, uh, insects can fly, destroying all your harvest. It's really unstable. So most people uh, would definitely be uh, meat eaters if they had chance. If you want to eat meat, you have to you had to grow some and feed them. And that's why you need agriculture. So then in Europe, you can build in Scarabre, in Iron Age, in Stone Age period, Stone Age, which was built at the early uh, Bronze Age period, can be built much, much later. 
Okay, so again, I'm going to check the time. Okay, I got like four, six minutes, which is pretty enough for half politic period. Uh, to finish this time, and next lesson we'll move to Slovak prehistory, which will be very different. Late uh, Neolithic period also got late stone and neskora, albo najmladšia doba kamenna, albo takzvaný chalkolit. Chalkum means uh, copper in Greek language, či aj doba medena. Only this period is when the first metal exploitation and smelting appears with the first copper uh, objects. We think it appeared probably in Anatolia, the, but first tools were found in uh, southeastern Europe, like in Prokuple, Serbia, the copper eggs. But at the same time, also first early gold, uh, golden jewelry was found in Bulgaria. At the same time, surprise, surprise, in China and also in America. So again, the level of evolution is probably very similar to these parts. So, uh, also Etsy, you will see this guy, you will meet this guy in here. Uh, for us, what you need to know, Indo-Europeans arrived to Europe, which were um, ancestors of uh, uh, ancestors of our people, of our languages, mostly European ones, but we'll deal with, deal with them. Also, uh, in this period, these like early agricultural civilizations are re rising in Mediterranean with Greeks, uh, with Mesopotamia, with Sumer and Babylon, in China with their dynasties, in Pharaoh kingdoms of e in Egypt with early Indian civilizations and their states. So having first towns and states and empires where the organization and specialization of labor was organized in excellent level and we will be talking about this oriental despotcy or hierarchy of people the pyramid of social classes in various lifetimes until actually medieval times here this period uh, changed when they first time mixed copper with tin and created bronze age period already in world history this is not prehistory but this is ancient times as Achina Starovek because approximately 3000 BC ancient scripts are invented in the Middle East and Mediterranean and in China. Not for Slovakia because we don't have writing script in here so that's why next lesson we'll talk about that. So a couple of pictures in here Indo-European expansion, who probably we're not sure whether from Iran or maybe southern Russia, maybe some other place, spread it all around these European and Central Asian parts, even to North India. So again, because it uh, provides a lot of, how to say, fake histories and dreaming, <laughs> dreaming theories. Uh, the how who are the original the oldest people in here is really difficult to say compare so now we can combine it with this genographic and archaeology uh and we can actually track them much better than a few years before and there are many many languages and haplogroups and the situation actually at the end of this topic we'll come to the point who we are where do we come from and uh let's see for example this baltic and belarus ukraine I, one of these uh, theories, but there are many, many of them. So it's real difficult to say maybe Yamaiska kultura and culture in, in Russia. So this was really, really different. So what to say? Let's have rather have a look at. <coughs> Sorry for that. <clears throat> Thank you for blessing me if you did. Uh, let's move to the last part, which is Otzi was actually the most famous representative. You may know this story how uh, uh, how two hikers in Italian Alps find uh, a hand from the ice, thought that probably some mountaineer fell from a rock, maybe uh, taken by avalanche, <clears throat> called the police, and they realized uh, that probably they need to call archaeologists who discovered an analytic, analytic man who was killed at that place, left behind, <clears throat> sorry for that, they could actually uh, restore the clothing, his equipment, including weapons, and even the content of his stomach in here. So I'm trying to upload this, and by the time I have a sip of water. <clears throat> I believe it helps me. Yeah, so this is trial for another movie, The Iceman. Uh, that is actually meant from ice, but guy who was holding a copper dagger, and this was beautiful uh, movie. In my opinion, beautiful one of the best depicted prehistoric movie when this guy was killed. Look at these copper eggs in here that he held, and they start try to reconstruct his 
living in Alps somewhere in uh, Austria, <coughs> near the borders with Italy in the Alps, how these like Neolithic, analytic, analytic actually people were living like like hunters and gatherers. Uh, if they had some small field, but of course at this place it was very difficult. But they traded, uh, traded, and he had actually he went on a part of revenge. Um, he was killed from behind, and uh, actually very nice depiction what they knew, how they were living, an excellent bow, and everything. So because we are running out of time, so of course we don't have so much time for this because it's last minute. So very quickly, I just click some more. Uh, cartoons in here <clears throat> because we are moving to bronze period and very quickly to iron uh, so if you told me that I just bought this bronze stuff you're telling me I ought to upgrade to iron or stone age man bronze age man and iron age man you know the ironing and of course isn't it uh, a little bit early to put up the tree so this nice pre-christmas choke uh, cartoon is for the end of the lesson and next lesson we are moving to Slovensko v Praveku and it will be in Slovak language of course we go back to uh, Stone Age period Mesolithic period because it will be interesting uh, also for us and with the mammoth hunters here in Slovakia and Moravia okay that's all from me lads uh, don't forget you need to also write me some last things so check out my tasks, my questions before or during the lesson and reply them not to have the absence and don't forget to write uh, some uh, reports and do the bonus activities so you'll have nice marks once for, uh, for the half mid-year or next year so that's all from me have a nice day stay safe stay positive in tests uh, not positive negative in tests and positive in mind bye bye